so today I'd like us to look not at a whole chapter, not even at a complete verse, but at actually part of a verse, the first words of verse 5 in chapter 7 of the book of Nehemiah, where we read, Then my God put it into my heart. Then my God put it into my heart. And it continues, Then my God put it into my heart to assemble the nobles and the people and the officials to be enrolled by genealogy. Now, let's recognize Nehemiah is a pretty clever guy. Nehemiah is a very able and strong leader. Nehemiah is a man that has already displayed strength and courage. And he's a man of deep, deep convictions. But what we read in this verse is not uh, Nehemiah's good idea. Uh, it's not Nehemiah's idea at all, actually. We are told that God put something into Nehemiah's heart. God put something into Nehemiah's mind. There's something now in Nehemiah's heart and mind that God has purposed. That's part of God's plan to prosper Jerusalem. God is looking today for a people who will listen to his voice. God is looking for a church that today will hear his voice. And God is looking for a people in a church today who will obey his voice. The early church began in the city of Jerusalem. Why Jerusalem? Well, Jerusalem because that was where God told them to begin. And they began where he told them to begin. It was his idea. Paul was led by the Holy Spirit to take the good news of the gospel to Europe. It wasn't Paul's idea to go to Europe. It was God's idea that Paul would go to Europe. We need today to be a people who hear the voice of God and who heed the voice of God. There's a little verse in John 10 that I just love. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Because they know his voice. Get to know his voice. Let's listen to his voice. As we read our Bibles, God speaks to us and he teaches us how to live. He teaches us his ways. He teaches us how to live godly lives as followers of Jesus Christ. When it comes to where to live, or what to prioritize, or how to start a, a new ministry, or, or who to ask for help, God speaks to us by the still, small voice of his Holy Spirit. And he also speaks to us through his word. He sometimes speaks through the still, small voice, and he sometimes speaks uh, louder with a, with a louder shout to us. He speaks in such ways as speaking to us even in the nighttime through dreams, through pictures, through impressions, through words of knowledge. We don't always hear God's voice clearly, but God speaks. Here God spoke. He spoke to Nehemiah. When God is our shepherd, when God's the one that we love with our hearts and with our minds, he puts his ways and his plans before us. He puts into us his ways and his plans. He puts them into our hearts and into our minds. I just love this little phrase in uh, this verse from Nehemiah chapter 7 verse 5. Then my God put it into my heart. I'm going to close this short devotion today with a prayer that I found in a, in a book by a man called Charlie Cleverly. It's called The Newport Epiphany. Here's the prayer. Facing the high tide and seeing salvation, glimpsing God and heaven open, as clouds roll in from the sea, you are here, and all makes sense. I am your small sheep. I hear your voice, and you know my name, and I follow you. 
Nothing will snatch me from my Father's hand, because my Father is greater than all, and I am yours. O great shepherd of my soul, let me love you more. And those you love, all mankind, my enemies, my friends, those who hate you, those who love you, lead me to them. Lead me where you would have me go. Amen. And as you're sitting quietly in God's presence, take a moment and take that little phrase, my sheep hear my voice. And just pray this prayer, Lord, would you unstop my ears? Would you, Lord, tune my heart to your heart? Help me to hear you, to hear your voice, to heed your word. Lord, just sharpen my hearing and make me an attentive listener for Jesus' sake. Amen.